Hey gang, Dirty Rob from the West Michigan Trail Runners here with this week's shoe video and I'm starting off 2016 with the granddaddy of them all. That's right, Cascadia 11 and all its tank-like wonder and beauty and amazement. Uh, new upper this year, same mental outsole. They've made some changes though that I'm having a problem with. So I'm going to be really curious what you Cascadia wearers, lovers, think about this shoe. I really hope some of you have had some comments in the uh, comment section below, but we'll see. Let's talk about what they've done to the shoe and why I'm having such a hard time accepting dealing with some of these things. So top down, tongue. The good is it's really padded. You know, the shoe's a tank. We know that. We know getting into it is not going to be a minimal barefoot type shoe, so we don't mind a little padding. Bad part is there is no lace guidance system on it. I know most of you are going to say, Rob, you're an idiot who cares about it. It bothers me. Sorry. I want something on this tongue that's going to keep this tongue in place. Even the few miles I've put in the shoe already, I notice when the tongue slides a little bit to one side. And it's even more noticeable when you have this much padding that when that's not there, you feel it. So, Brooks, you make some really cool little fabric eyelet things that you put on a lot of your road shoes. This is a hugely heavy shoe. It's not going to be significantly different to put a little bit of fabric on this tongue to guide that lace and keep that tongue in place. Begging you. Please do it. Second complaint, working our way down into the laces. Laces, not a problem. It's that kind of double flat thing they've done in the past. I really like the laces. They stay tied. That's great. It's the eyelets that I'm having a problem with on this version. They've moved them up a little bit. So what you end up with is a shoe that if you use the second to last eye, like the majority of people do, it sits further down the foot than you're used to. So this opening from the last eyelet to the back of the shoe seems larger than normal, longer than normal, and it feels a little unsecure, a little unusual. But then if you use the last eyelet, it somehow feels like it's too high or too far, but still not securing the heel anymore. I don't know how they did it. I don't know what they did. I'm not a shoe designer. I don't build shoes. But these eyelets are in not awesome places in relation to my foot. Don't know what else to say about that. I'm gonna be really curious to see if someone else has a problem with that because it's driving me crazy. Probably because I can't get a secure fit in it and also because I can't figure out why. The rest of the upper is mostly the same. It even looks very similar other than the color schemes. A lot of synthetic overlays in very similar spots. I think they've kind of broadened some of these spots here to deal with some dirty durability issues they've had in previous versions. New mid, uh, midfoot section to give a little better wrap and tightness across that midfoot and it works. I mean, there's a ton of padding in this collar and tongue and, and midfoot and heel. And it's a great Cascadia-esque fit back here. It's everything you would expect. Big heel counter, all that stuff. The toe box, though. That's a whole nother ball game. A, it's a little pointy. Drives me crazy. Um, B, it's a little more narrow than I feel like the last one was. I couldn't find my 10s to compare it to. I did find my 9s. This was definitely more narrow. I found a whole pair of 6s crazy enough. Definitely more narrow. And I know you're saying that, yeah, Rob, you probably ran a couple hundred miles in those and you're probably right. But this was noticeably more narrow here. And even worse, noticeably more shallow across the top. Just standing in the shoe, you can see a little tiny subtle bump where my big toe hits. And that doesn't happen all that often. It's really rare. Uh, so it bothered me. When I ran in it, I was thinking about this. And you know if you're running and thinking about how a shoe fits, it's not good. This toe box bugged me when I was running because it felt off. Something's not quite right. Definitely less volume up here than in the previous version. Definitely. Although I will say I do like the kind of synthetic overlay, the, the welded overlay they put right on top of the big toe. You see all the time about shoes ripping right there where big toes kind of push up and tear through the thin fabric. They're trying to make these shoes lighter weight. A little extra protection there, a little more durability, durability problem solved. One other thing they did to secure the durability is around the outside of the wall, or outside of the shoe, right above the, where the midsole and outsole lock in, you can see this kind of welded overlay there again that adds a lot more durability protection. Uh, I suspect running through streams and garbage and things popping up into the shoe, this foot will stay more dry, a little more secure. Uh, although a counterpoint to that, I wonder how well the shoe drains if you're running through streams. Again, it's Michigan, it's January, it's literally eight degrees right now. Uh, didn't run through any streams in the shoe. 
I suspect it wouldn't drain well. Getting in the midsole, same biomogo DNA midsole, same ballistic rock shield under the forefoot, same forefoot and heel pivot points, same segmented caterpillar outsole, same lug pattern. Uh, honestly, running in it underfoot, it felt very Cascadia-esque, and I liked it. It's a great ride and a very consistent feel, and it gave me the ride I was expecting to put it on, which was very comforting. Uh, Weight-wise, they say on their website it went up two tenths of an ounce. I can tell you from weighing the ones in my physical possession that they went down two tenths of an ounce. Again, manufacturing inconsistencies, maybe. My size 14 in my hand right now weighs 15.2 ounces. That is entirely too heavy for a trail shoe. I'm sorry. It is. It's a heavy shoe, but it, again, it is the Cascadia. It's a tank. We expect that. We shouldn't be surprised by that. That's fine. Uh, stack height still 10 millimeter drop, 27 there, 17 there. So it's a very familiar, hey, I run road a lot, I run trail every once in a while, I want something durable, I want to wear it, run it for two years, this is your shoe. I mean, the miles people pile on in these shoes is astounding. They last forever. Uh, I know a couple guys I run with who have had the same pair for, and they've gone through two summers in the shoe. You were running one to two times a week on trail uh, and they last. So it's a tank, we get it. Yeah, I shouldn't say I'm terribly surprised by anything I found in the shoe. I'm not, other than this toe box and these eyelet things. They're driving me crazy. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me where so many shoes and so many companies now are trying to make them more comfortable. You know, slightly wider toe box so those toes can splay out a little bit. Um, this, I don't know what to do about this. I can't wrap my brain around it. I really hope someone tries it out, runs in it, and comments below the video because something's not quite right on my foot. But again, maybe it's my foot. Uh, but I can tell you I've tested a ton of new shoes in the last six weeks, road shoes as well, and nothing else has done that other than this one. So it's got to be the shoe. Uh, other than that, 120 bucks price didn't go up. So, you know, Cascadia lovers, I think you're going to love it. Non-Cascadia lovers, if you have a slightly narrow foot and you need a durable winter training shoe or a trail shoe to last you a long time, you want to do some light hiking, fantastic shoe for that. This thing's going to take a beating and last you forever, uh, sadly. It did not earn the esteem position in the trunk of my car. It will not be part of my regular rotation. There's too many shoes out there. The Leadville for one, the, the Olympus for another, the, any, you know, the Hoka's that are giving you a lot of durability, a lot of traction, a lot of comfort for long miles on the trail that are lighter than this. So sadly, no improvements that rose it up in the, the standards of my shoe collection, but it is a standard Hang your hat on great old Cascadia. So that's it, gang. Cascadia 11. It's on the shelves now. Stop by your specialty running store and check it out. Try it on, see what you think. And please leave me a comment because I'm curious to see what you think about it. So that's it. I'm out for the week. And next week, more trail shoes. They're coming in fast and furious. Stay warm out there. Remember, folks, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. Get outside. Peace out.